What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the DTV channel. If your day is not going good, I hope tomorrow's better. If you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button and that notification bell. If you've already subscribed, thank you for your loyalty. In this video, I got a good one. Y'all see I'm outside in the nice weather. I know I'm always usually cooped up, you know, in, in the crib, but we outside for this one. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to film football videos like a pro. I know y'all see the videos that the NFL teams be posting when they have their videographers in the end zone and they get those videos of the running backs or the wide receiver catching that nice catch coming towards the end zone. And I know, it looks really nice. When it comes to equipment, football videography is a very demanding field. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say like when any other type of photography, how you can just have whatever equipment is possible to you. No, I'm not gonna lie. It is very equipment based. Like I'm not gonna lie, football videography would have to be like 70% equipment, 30% skill. If we're putting it on a scale, because you could have a lot of skill, but if you are lacking in the equipment side, your videos are just not gonna come out nicely. We're gonna break this video up into steps. We're gonna talk about the equipment needed, the best camera settings, the best positioning to be on the field, and lastly, I'm gonna leave you guys with a couple key things to remember. All right, let's get into the video. So jumping into the first thing, we're gonna be talking about equipment. Like I said before, football videography is a very demanding field when it comes to equipment. The equipment that you are using will heavily affect the type of image that you get. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the type of camera that you use. One of the biggest factors that the type of camera you have will affect is the type of focusing that you are able to do. When it comes to football videography, a lot of things are moving in and out of frame. You need to have a camera that is able to either change focus quickly or hold focus like for a long time, depending on what you're trying to be, like, you know, have in focus. That's one of the things like when I used to have uh, my first camera when I had the Canon M50 I tried shooting football videography before and football photography and it was very very difficult because of the focusing people moving in and out of the frame a lot I'm losing frame of somebody let's say a running back is running the ball they're running through a whole bunch of different like they're running through the line you never really know like you'll you'll lose focus so quickly and next thing you know you miss the whole shot rather you're doing f uh, photography or videography in terms of equipment i'm just gonna give you guys some suggestions in terms of the sony realm because i can't really speak too much on any other type of photography but i will tell you this you will do very very well with the sony a7 III rather mark one or mark two that's completely up to you but that camera does very well when it comes to focusing in any type of situations when it comes to photography it, it, it holds its own i can tell you that much a7 III and up you should be fine so that if in the canon realm that relates to the canon rp and up so you do with that information what you will now when it comes to lenses this is probably one of the most heavily affected parts of the shot that you get there's no right or wrong lens to use when it comes to football videography but i will tell you this much i would say there is like a main three that you should be using in football videography i don't think you should ever use a wide angle lens i, I don't think there's any place in football videography for any type of wide angle anything because you are not that close to the action that you have the space to be using a wide angle lens or then it's or then like you don't have the need to be using one with that being said i'll tell you my holy trinity we like to say when it comes to the lenses it can range anywhere between these but this is basically the best lenses you could use when it comes to full wall videography so we have the 24 to 70 or anything equal to the 70 to 200 or anything equal to and the big boy the 100 to 400 or once again anything equal to those lenses will all give a very unique feel to any type of videography you're doing when it comes to on the football field. Now, every single one of them has their own rightful spot depending on what situation you're in on the football field. Rather that be, you know, you're, you're recording from one touchdown and the, the, the defense and the offense are all the way at the other side of the field, or if they're all the way really close to you, they're on a 10 yard line and you're right behind the touchdown. It really all depends on the situation. If you're gonna go with one lens, the best lens that you can go for is the 70 to 200. The 70 to 200 is like that, that, that perfect median when it comes to lenses, literally. My least favorite lens out of those would have to be the 100 to 400. It's just a really bulky lens and it requires a lot more skill, which I can do. Don't, don't, don't try to play me because I've, I've taken really good videos with the 100 to 400, but it's just, it's a very bulky lens. It also zooms out of camera. This one, when you zoom, it doesn't go out of camera. It zooms, it's an internal zoom. So that's, with that being an external zoom, you, it makes more sense to put it on a tripod. You have to get used to using that. It gets to be a lot more difficult. This gives me a lot more control over the shot that I'm trying to get and me trying to keep things in focus. If you're on a budget, a lot of people may think you need a monitor when it comes to videography, especially with sports. You don't. You don't need a monitor. I've learned the hard way. I've seen, I look up to a lot of uh, videographers when I was learning about this, and a lot of them have monitors, and they're, they're, they're recording all low, and they got their monitors and stuff like that. You don't need it. You don't need it. You can use them. Now, don't get me wrong. They do help, but you don't need them. It's not a necessity. We're talking about necessities here. It's not a necessity. And the last but not least, get a mic. 
get a microphone. You don't want to be using the in-camera mic because most good cameras nowadays do not have built-in like good microphones. So you want to get an off-camera mic, a shotgun microphone, just so you can get that nice audio. Maybe somebody get a touchdown, they want to talk, they talk. You feel me? You want to make sure you can capture that. They can't win no more. The next thing we're going to talk about is camera settings. A lot of videographers, which honestly it doesn't make any sense to me because Let's say you follow this video in the steps. You got the equipment and now you're getting to the, uh, you know, the, the settings. Some people will have the equipment but not know how to use it. I ain't gonna lie, before you get something, learn how to use it. Or at least when you get it, learn how to use it before you go use it in the field. But when it comes to the settings, you wanna shoot in the highest frame rate possible that your camera can go. And the best suggested, like if your camera cannot shoot in 120 FPS, get a better camera. That's the best I can say for you because in 60 FPS, it can work, yes but you're gonna want that 120 to get that ultra slow-mo when it comes to somebody doing something crazy. And let's just say you don't even wanna use ultra slow-mo. 120 frames just looks a lot better in regular speed than 60 FPS does. It looks a whole lot better. So definitely make sure you get a camera that can shoot in 120. Now, let's say you got a camera that can shoot in 240. That's dope. You shoot in 240, you go for it. I have no idea how that's gonna look. I'm sure it'll look nice though. And I'm sure the slow-mo will look even better. One thing to always remember, always keep your shutter speed double your frame rate. Don't go higher, don't go lower. So if you're shooting in 120 FPS, keep your shutter at 240, 240, 250. No matter what your frame rate is, always make sure that your shutter is doubled. In. That's a very standard rule when it comes to videography. Always remember that and your videos will come out nicely. Lastly, when it comes to camera settings, try to record your videos in a log. And when I say log, that's your picture profile. It, it's gonna come off looking very, very dull. I'll show you an example right now. This video is recorded in a log and you see how very dull and drained it looks versus now. This is how it looks when it's color graded. If you want, it's up to you. It does take a lot more work, but it, it's worth it because you can actually have some flexibility in terms of your unique style when it comes to your picture profile of your videos. So when somebody looks at your content and they just see it somewhere, they're like, oh snap, yeah, I know who, I know who recorded this. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna talk about positioning. This is the last one on the list of steps, but this is, it has to be damn near one of those crucial ones because you can have the equipment, you can have the settings, and your positioning could just be so bad that your videos come out terrible. Positioning is everything when it comes to anything when it comes to cameras. Photography and videography, the way that you position yourself and the way that you angle yourself when it comes to the image of what you are recording or taking pictures of, it heavily affects the shot that you get. I'm gonna teach you guys right now. You do very simple things and your shot can just come out so much better. One of the main things that you need to know, when you're on a football field, like we're on a football field right now, you need to understand where the ball is. You need to understand where the ball is and what team you are recording for. Whether you're recording for the defense or the offense on this team, you need to make sure you are always in their touchdown. And I'm speaking damn near under the goalposts. That is the best position to be while you are in their touchdown. Not in it, be behind it, of course. Make sure you're safe. Don't use this video to get your ass in trouble or hurt. You know, do it at your own risk. And if a referee tells you to move from there, just move. Don't argue with the ref. Don't get the game delayed or get yourself thrown out, make a scene, it's not worth it. If the ref tells you to move, just move. Because more than likely they will tell you to, depending on where you're at and who you are. Stop doing videos standing up. Just stop. Stop doing videos standing up. They don't look good. The best positions to be to get those really nice IG videos of people doing highlights and running backs doing certain things and, and wide receivers catching head tops, the best position to be is sitting down. Everything looks better from a lower angle and that goes for pictures and videos. So if you're behind that end zone, make sure you are seated, taking a knee, something. If you just can't figure out why something looks a little weird or just looks so plain, sit down and just watch everything look so much better. Always remember that if you're recording for a specific team, every quarter they switch sides. Every quarter the ball switch sides. So if they're at the t they're damn near about to catch a touchdown, right? And they're at the 10 and you're behind that end zone and you're ready, but the quarter end, your ass better run to the other side of that end zone. Cause I promise you, they're switching sides and you got about, you got about like a minute or two before they actually continue the next play. But definitely make sure you get over there. Try not to get too surprised about it. Cause I've had my fair share of like, I'm just chilling. Cause that doesn't happen in basketball. They only switch sides on, on halftime. I know I said the best position to be is the end zone, but let's just say, like I said, a referee is not allowing you to be there. The more likely will just tell you to move a little bit further back, but let's say they're not, they're not letting you in the end zone at all. The, another great place you can be is off to the sidelines, but make sure that, you, that when you're at the sidelines, you're closer to their touchdown. Let's just say you're at the, like the 10 or 20 because Remember, on each sideline, those are where the teams are. And you already know when a team is about to score, the other team likes to run down the sidelines with them. 
So that you don't get trampled, be closer to the end zone because the teams aren't allowed to move past a certain box on, on the sidelines. So just make sure you're closest to the touchdown and that way you can still catch some great images. The touchdown is a lot better position to be, but if you can't be there because of the referees or whatever the case may be, sidelines will work. In terms of the very few things to follow or the rules to follow, that's all I got. I'm just gonna leave you guys with five key things to always remember when doing football videography. First up, I want you guys to always remember, start recording before the plays. You miss a lot of things you try to start recording right before the play starts. Always start recording once the line is still getting ready and stuff like that. Just make sure you're capturing all of that. On the other end of that, make sure to just don't stop recording right after the play is over. You never really know what you can catch after the play. Another key thing to remember is going to be, try not to be distracted. Don't be on your phone in between plays. Take it from me. I've missed a lot of things just being on my phone in between plays. Just when you're at the game, put your phone to do not disturb and just focus on the game. Focus on what's going on so you don't miss a play or miss something important, because it will happen. Don't be talking to people, because I promise you, you will, for, you will miss something. So just try to focus in and enjoy the game. Imagine you, you know, you're watching a game on your couch, but you're watching it in first person. You're actually there. But the next key thing to remember is try not to drink or eat a lot of anything before a game. Football games are long. They're really long and there may not always be a bathroom accessible. And as a videographer, you have to be catching every single play. So you going to the bathroom, the chances of it may be very, very slim. So try not to eat or drink a lot of anything right before a game. Another key tip that's kind of relating to that, use the bathroom before a game and use the bathroom at halftime. Those are your two windows to use the bathroom. You can't use the bathroom in between quarters. You can't use the bathroom in between plays. You're gonna miss something. Last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with being that, you know, around this time of football season, it's starting to get a real chilly out. <sighs> I hate this. I hate this time. I hate, th I hate this time. I love football, but I hate late October, early November football. I hate it. Invest in some hand warmers and invest in some really great quality gloves. Because when it gets cold out here, operating the camera with your hands, it may, it may become very, very difficult. It may, it may, I'm not going to lie. It may make you hate being out there, you know? So I understand that we always tend to bundle up, but also be, keep in mind your hands will get very, very cold. If this is your first time shooting football videography, it's your first year doing it. Make sure that you get invested some hand warmers to maybe put in the gloves or in your pockets or anything like that. Um, and just invest in some gloves that are really high quality, will keep your hands warm, but still allow you to access your camera and use it properly. With that being said, guys, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video was able to help you guys. If there are any more tips that you need to learn about football videography and anything, Drop them in the comments. I'll make a part two. I know there's a couple of things. I just, I don't know exactly what beginning videographers are looking to learn nowadays. I'm just, I'm just explaining to you guys things that I was trying to learn when I started and things I've just learned thus far that has helped me along the way. So if you guys have any more questions or anything, I'll make a part two or I'll just answer your questions in the comment section below. Feel free to DM me with any questions as well. Maybe I'll answer them in one question q and I've been getting a lot of DMs from a lot of people watching the videos and I really do appreciate it. I have a lot more one question Q&As to make. You good? You stretched? Are you are you are you comfortable now? Yeah. Jesus. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys didn't enjoy it, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. If you can stay creative, see you next one. Peace. Okay. Bro, stop. Bro.